Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Here's our first big conversation for today. First Bank of Nigeria and its holding company, FBN Holdings, have new boards appointed by the Central Bank of Nigeria. This follows the sacking of the previous boards of both institutions by the Apex Bank. The boards were fired on live television and for, alleged, for alleged insider abuse, insider credit and poor corporate governance. A writer with online medium Techabao, Olumuyiwa Olowoboyega, is here to help us understand what led to this and what it means for First Bank and the banking industry as a whole. Good morning and thanks for joining us again. Hi, good morning. Uh, it's great to be here. All right. So um, Nigerians were shocked seeing the news. CBN Sachs Board of Directors at FBN Holdings First Bank restates, you know, Dr. Shola Adit Duton. What do you think might have led to this? You know, I'm talking about deeper beyond what we see in the news. Um, so this has felt like it's been a long time coming. Um, First Bank is one of the banks that is deemed too big to fail in Nigeria, mm. which means that um, Central Bank, which is the regulator, puts an eye on them a lot. So um, Central ba um, First Bank rather had been having some issues since about 2016. There were some issues of non-performing loans, um, a really high ratio of non-performing loans uh, that was above uh, an acceptable percent of 5%. I believe at one time, their non-performing loan ratio was up to around 14%. And in fact, they even wrote off loans of up to 827 billion naira, um, as a matter of fact. So um, that was the beginning of some of the problems. So at the time, CBS stepped in uh, because they, they had some um, capitalization problems. So the CBN stepped in um, and announced a new board. And one of the things for the new board was they were supposed to help drive down um, the non-performing loan ratio and, and sort of stabilize the bank. Uh, to some extent, the new board was able to do that to some extent. Uh, but there were still bigger issues, um, such as uh, some insider lending, and the terms of some insider lending. So that's sort of how we have found ourselves here. Okay, I, I want you to, you know, for the benefit of, you know, millennials and maybe people who don't understand, I want us to break down these terms, insider abuse, insider trading, breakdown of corporate governance, so, you know, we can all be on the same page. All right, so insider lending is basically um, when a bank extends a loan to directors or principal officials within the bank. It's perfectly legal. Um, the only thing around insider um, lending is that it must have the same terms as if, for instance, if you wanted to get a loan in the bank. So mm -hmm. it must not come across as preferential. There must be no incentives, basically. Okay. Um, so that's basically what insider lending is. So um, some, of, some of the most important things around this particular um, First Bank's case is that the, the CBN said there was a high rate of insider lending, um, for one, and for one of the uh, insider lending uh, credit facilities, for instance, there were really big irregularities, for instance. Um, one of those irregularities was that um, the bank hadn't sort of perfected the collateral it used to issue that loan. So that was a big issue. And that issue had, uh, was something that CBN had written to First Bank about on several locations, according to a memo from the First Bank uh, that, that we saw yesterday. All right, Olumu, you are. Another um, thing most Nigerians are a bit confused about is uh, the issue of uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria. You know, some would like would say that uh, what is the business with the CBN and, of course, uh, the appointment of uh, board of directors and, of course, corporate governance in any particular bank. I know the CBN, you know, uh, steps in when they have issues of, uh, you know, problems in the money market in Nigeria, but specifically uh, for understanding's um, purpose, does the Central Bank of Nigeria have um, all the powers, you know, to appoint, uh, you know, remove a board of directors of any bank? Um, the short answer is that, yes, the CBN has those powers. Um, the thing is, uh, so I think it's important to state that the uh, First Bank's management is well within its rights, for instance, um, to remove um, an MD or a CEO. However, um, that removal must be done um, with respect to existing regulation. Um, what the CBN said yesterday was that it was not notified of the change um, of Dr. Shola Ade uh, And most importantly, that Dr. Shola Ade um, tenure hadn't, hadn't expired. So the CBN's concern was that 
um, that, that that removal not send the wrong message to investors and onlookers, for instance. So yes, the CBN had the power to step in and, and, and change the board, uh, but like then it did again, in 2016 uh, as well. But then again, you talked about sending wrong signals to investors and, of course, um, customers, because a lot of Nigerians are reacting that uh, CBN is taking over the, uh, the First Bank of Nigeria and, of course, uh, its holding company. Does it really uh, uh, tell on its uh, customer base uh, you know, right now? Because most people are thinking of maybe doing a run on the bank. No, no, there's, there's no real reason to fear. Um, one of the first things I said was First Bank is one of the banks that the CBN deems too big to fail. So nothing is going to happen. Shareholder, uh, um, uh, customers deposits are safe. There's no real reason to fear. Um, this is basically just trying to correct um, long running errors in corporate governance. Because like I said, uh, these are some long running issues from 2016. So this is corrective, although late, but it's corrective. And, and there's no real reason for any customer to, to have any real fears. Hmm. And we're seeing that for years, the CBN has used Adidator, you know, basically to check, you know, the issues of insider trading and all that in the bank. Do, do we expect to see him continue in that role? Um, so, Dr. Shala Adidator was reinstated yesterday. It's, it's very unclear. I cannot speak to um, his views on insider lending or how the CBN um, looked at his role to sort of get insider lending under control. Those would come to conjecture. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, all in all, the, the most important thing for First Bank is to keep driving down their, their non-performing loan ratio and to come to a point of stronger corporate governance. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's, that's basically what they, they have in mind. Okay. Also, we saw a story here on the newspapers that uh, the CBN said they took this decision to protect customers and shareholders. So looking at the bigger picture, how would this, you know, protect customers and shareholders? Um, so at the end of the day, um, um, so most, some of these monies are, I mean, it, it's, it's the business of banking. You take money from everybody, um, you make uh, um, some loans and you earn some interest on that. So at the end of the day, um, anything that makes for stronger corporate governance, anything that makes for proper um, risk assessment, anything that makes a bank more circumspect in its lending and its operations as a whole are good for the shareholders who, real, who have real money in there and who are part owners of the bank as well. So it, the, the idea is that even if you don't own a majority stake, you still deserve to have money in a company that has been properly run. So at the end of the day, shareholders' interests are being protected. And for the customers, uh, their interests are being protected because you, you don't want to use a bank that, that, that fails or is insolvent. So yeah, so uh, the big picture is just to protect everybody and to uh, prevent some of the worst outcomes, really. All right, let's do talk about the inside trading issue for a bit. Uh, just uh, leave the cent um, the First Bank of Nigeria, you know, on the side for a bit and talk about um, the <clears throat> the commercial banks generally. You said it is uh, a regular thing uh, for most uh, bank uh, management to be involved in insider trading and insider lending. But then again, the issue of corporate governance is the main talk right now. How do we begin to ensure that banks actually you know, follow a regulatory framework of the central bank and, of course, so that at the end of the day, uh, we'll not have issues of uh, you know, the NDIC you know, stepping in to take over banks? Um, so basically, the thing is, um, corporate governance has standards. Uh, and there's not, again, like I said, all these things have rules that guide them. Insider lending, as I said, it's not a crime. It's not illegal at all. As always, um, the, the most important thing is the abuse is of it. <laughs> still follow the existing regulations, right? Um, First Bank also had an issue about removing an MD a few years ago. I believe it was Alonge. Um, so it's just to prevent issues like this from arising. If MDs or CEOs want to be changed, then it must be done properly. Um, the CBN must be notified. If insider lending is done to principal officials, then it must also follow the same rules. Um, the same interest rates must apply. There must be no incentives. So basically, that's it. Because when you have strong corporate governance, you increase the chances that a company will survive and do well. You know, people do not cut corners. Uh, and and people, uh, the bank and its officials don't make moves that will land the company in hot water. So basically, th that's it. So the, the CBS business is almost always just stronger corporate governance uh, for, this, for these companies. Because stronger corporate governance will lead to better um, risk assessment. So, yeah. Hmm. So, right now, we've not heard from, you know, uh, 
Oba Otudeko and how, what his reaction to this would be like. Well, we've seen other analysts saying that he's likely to go to the courts, you know, to get an injunction to stop the CBN's move from falling through. Do you see that actually as a likelihood? And that's hard to speak to. So we we'll just have to watch and see how that plays out. So that, that's hard to tell. Hmm. But okay. if he eventually goes to court, hmm. you know, and gets a, an injunction, you know, stopping the CBN, what kind of situation would that, you know, look like, you know, regarding the customers, the stakeholders, and the bank committee or the bank board? As far as I'm concerned, if, if they go to court, they're only going to be asking one thing and one thing only, which would be asking if the central bank has the powers uh, to remove the board of directors, to which the answer is yes. But again, because I'm not a lawyer, there are certain legal aspects mm -hmm. to it I cannot speak to. But again, if they go to court, the primary question would be one, um, does the CBN have the powers um, to make these removals? Yeah. Hmm. All right, Olumi, well, let me play a bit of a devil's advocate here right now. We all know that uh, the banking sector is a well-regulated one, and of course, uh, First Bank uh, is indeed uh, one of the oldest banks in Nigeria. If they are well aware of uh, what happens uh, with regulation in Nigeria, why would they ordinarily not want to carry the central bank along in the <laughs> procedures? That's a difficult question to answer, uh, because that would be for the directors and the company, because um, um, I, I think that Naira Metrics quoted um, um, someone within the bank to say that the bank was well within its rights and it followed the existing rules. Uh, but at the end of the day, they did not notify the CBN, and that could have sent a, a wrong signal to, to the FX Bank. Now, if ordinarily things were all 100% uh, A-OK -okay with the first bank, it might not have, it might not have triggered anything at, at the central bank. Uh, but the central bank did say in their, in their press statement yesterday, Emefile was, uh, uh, was on TV yesterday, I was saying that um, they, had, they had been monitoring First Bank since about 2016 when some of the, their big issues had started. So for them, um, um, removing an MD CEO without telling the bank just sent a wrong signal mm. and it forced the, 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 the CBN to act. So there's that, there's that backstory to it that is important. So what's the likelihood of this causing you know, crisis within the bank and its management? I'm sorry, you have to say that again? I said, what's the likelihood of this whole you know, shake-up causing a crisis within the first bank? It's unlikely that this causes a crisis. I, I do not think that any of the parties, that's my personal opinion, I, mm -hmm. I do not think any of the parties will go to court, but that remains to be seen, of course. But I do expect that this will just be business as usual, um, um, life goes on, um, and then the, the board and every principal officer within the bank will focus on moving the bank towards a, a stronger financial footing, really. Okay, so, so beyond what was seen online, uh, you know, what was seen on social media, what do you perceive to be the reaction of Nigerians in general and even First Bank customers to this move? As always, um, I think that Nigerians just, um, um, I mean, we do not get a peek into corporate Nigeria very often. We do not get a peek behind the curtains of, of banking and what some of the amounts are. So these things are usually really a matter of surprise and people express uh, I'm shocked as to uh, and say things like, oh, I can't even get a line of credit and people are getting billions, hmm. billions in credit. So uh, those, are, those are typically some of the reactions. Uh, but I do not think there's any real fear uh, amongst uh, customers about their deposits. I do not think that, that there should be really. All right. So yeah, I, I think it's just shock and a marvel and um, a, a hmm. slight, slight uh, um, would I say, a disgust is a strong word. Just, you know, it just feels really bizarre uh, for a lot of people. Hmm. All right, aside from um, the First Bank of Nigeria, its holding company was also um, affected. Uh, let me just read part of uh, what was stated by the governor yesterday. That's the CBN governor. He said the problems at the bank were attributed to bad credit decisions, uh, significant and non-performing uh, under insider loans and poor corporate governance practice. The shareholders of the bank and the FBN holding PLC also lacked the capacity to recapitalize uh, the bank to minimum uh, requirements. Uh, these conclusions arose from various entities by the CBN to, uh, to them to recapitalize. Are they having recapitalization issues? Um, so, yeah, the CBN said as much in 2016. But I said that they're working towards it and the bank is currently on a stronger financial footing than it was 
in 2016. But yes, in 2016, they did have some issues with recapitalization, and the CBN has said as much, uh, um, more than once, yes. Okay, so how come uh, it was not just about um, the, 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 the management, uh, that's the board of directors of the bank alone, why uh, must it also be attributed to the holding company? Um, it's, so I, I would think that um, some of the issues with the holding company um, would be the fact that one of the insider loans was given to the, the chairman of the holding company. Oh, wow. um, so probably that felt like, um, and, and, not, and not only was the loan given, which is not a bad thing, as I've said time and time again, but I, it became a little contentious. Um, so I, I would think that that's one of the reasons they also decided that um, the holding company should also have a change in leadership. All right, uh, so going forward right now, what are the lessons to be learned by other commercial and of course deposit money banks in Nigeria? I just think that my, 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 my curiosity is, um, is about why the CBN let this drag this long, uh, because this feels like an issue that should have been resolved um, a long time ago. So yeah, but for commercial banks, the lessons are all the same. Uh, we've seen this. In, in, in a few cases before now. The lessons are all the same. And it's always a lesson of just have proper corporate governance. Um, um, don't, do, don't do some like really um, weird Ways and uh, uh, um, deals, you know? So again, stronger corporate governance, do things by the books. Uh, and for me, I think would be an apex bank that doesn't wait till things get really bad before stepping in. Hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I asked the question earlier about what kind of a crisis this might, this might generate. But we're now seeing that shares of, you know, first bank holdings is plunging. We're seeing that there's lots of sell-offs on the stock market, really. Did you actually see this coming? Uh, no. Um, I mean, I feel like, yes, the shareholders, it's not unusual for shareholders to react to big news like this. Um, this is, I think, would, would say that is fairly typical. But I do expect that in the long term, if the bank continues to um, improve and post better results, it will pass as well. Hmm. Okay, right. but then again, it was also reported that um, they have uh, had a significant improvement in the bank's financial condition with positive uh, trajectory of financial soundness indicators. The insider-related facilities remain problematic. But then again, if they are doing well, and uh, why should CBN still have problems with the board? Um, so the thing is, if they're doing well and they're still, they still some infraction, um, mm. it's clear that the board hasn't been able to deal with that infraction, mm. especially if that infraction has become a long-running issue about which the CBN has written to them time and time again. So I, I would think that it sends a message that the board could not exactly uh, manage the issue and the, and the CBN felt like um, it had given them enough time. Hmm. So um, we see that the CBN has actually released, you know, the list of, you know, the new board members taking a look at them. Lots of people had sort of an emotional attachment to the previous members of the board, you know, because of the accomplishments individually as a person. But looking at these, these, you know, new set of people, the new board members, what do you think about them and uh, what they have to offer really in the banking sector? I think that as always in situations like this, um, the, the remit for the new people is to solve um, whatever tiny problems they have on ground. And again, to just ensure stronger, stronger um, um, performance of the bank and ensure compliance with corporate governance rules. So yeah, really, um, when you have situations like this, you have people who are coming in to just stabilize the ship, uh, much like um, the, the, the board did to some, to some extent in 2016. Um, so yeah. So basically, uh, this would see some stability if it all goes to plan. All right. So we'll, we'll, keep, uh, we'll, we'll keep tabs on the news. Let's see, yes, you know, what plays out. Even though we've seen the directive from the CBN, you know, that they should not, the sacked board members should not communicate with the, with the public and that any communication should be directed through the bank. So mm -hmm. we'll definitely see how this plays out if they will be taking this matter to court. The CBN has also directed the board members to ensure that they pay off all loans so there's just a lot really unraveling with this matter. Yes. And uh, yes, we'll keep, we'll keep you we'll updated the on the breakfast. So thank right. you very much. Yes, indeed. Uh, Olumuyuwa Olobuiga is a writer with Tech Cabal, and he joined us to look at all of the issues uh, with the Central Bank of Nigeria, the FBN, and of course, its holding company. Many thanks once again, Olumuyuwa. Thank you very much.
All right, fantastic. We're done talking business. We're heading into <laughs> security matters next on The Breakfast. I love talking business. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back.